keep watching to see how to be a straight A student. And I'm speaking from personal experience. First of all, this might be a little bit cliche, but make sure to take notes. You'll want to be able to recall all your information when you're studying. Secondly, make sure that you write down every single assignment in your plan. This way you won't forget any of your assignments and you'll get everything for you on time. And lastly, don't be afraid to ask your teachers for help. Email them or go to office hours if you need. They're there to help you learn. essential study tips that you were probably never taught. Number one, blurting. Rather than just passively rereading your textbook and highlighting your notes, which is amazing and easy and fun, which is why we all do it, you need to use revision techniques which use something called active recall. Active recall is hard, it is taking knowledge out of your brain instead of just rereading stuff. To do some blurting, I'm going to choose something to remember. Let's do chapter one biology, I'm going to test myself on it. And I'm going to write down every single thing that I can remember from that chapter from memory. And I can use a few prompts words if I want from the chapter but I'm just going to go ahead and write. There we go. Then you just get a highlighter and you compare it to your notes or your textbook and straight away you know what you don't know. It's such an efficient use of time. You now know what you need to work on more. I dare you to go try it for something you're trying to learn. My book with all my taught study tips is coming out on the 5th of August. Follow for study tip part 2. how to memorize anything instantly. This is gonna help you so much during exams. So I was on Pinterest and I saw a hack that says, read it 10 times, say it 10 times, and write it down two times. You guys, I kid you not, I memorized so much information based off this. Follow if you want more hacks like this. Stop scrolling if you want to know one of the best study techniques that I use to get really good grades. It's super good, super efficient for really hard exams. It's a three-step process and you'll really, really benefit from it. Step number one, go through all of the places that you can find information on what you're studying. So if that's a PowerPoint, if that's a lecture that's recorded, if that's a textbook, find all of the relevant and important information and write it down in your notebook, just as if you were taking notes. Step number two, now that you have all the information that you need in your notes, what you're going to do is you're going to record yourself reading the entire thing so that you can study and take the information, but also break down each section into different recordings and I'll tell you why. That's because step number three is going to be to listen to all of your recordings once or twice. And now you give your brain really the opportunity to learn it, memorize it, and retain it because not only did you write it down, you said it out loud, but you also listened to it. Save this video, let me know how it goes, and don't forget to follow for more videos on studying tips. Here's one of the best ways to study for a test. So first grab a notebook, take a marker, and write the subject at the top of your paper. Next, grab a pen and a highlighter. Take a pen or a marker and write down the unit that you're learning. Then take your highlighter and make lines for each subtopic that there is in your unit. So let's say in my unit there are three main things I need to learn, so I'm going to make three lines like this. You're going to take your pen and then write topic one, topic two, and topic three, but write down the action of the topic. This is just an example. Now, write down every single thing that you remember in bullet points. So just be vague and make a list, not a whole paragraph. Once you're done, you're gonna look at the topic that has the least amount of information or the one that you struggled the most on. You're gonna make another line halfway in that box that you struggled on, and then write a new set of notes on the side so you can improve on that. Or you can do it on a separate page. Keep doing this until you have a good understanding of the whole unit. You can literally memorize hundreds of pages of notes by using this technique. Once you memorize the first line without referring to your notes, move on to the second. You guys already know that I had to try this study technique out and let you guys know if it's fact or cap. He's a doctor and he said that this is what got him a 4.0 GPA, so who am I not to try it? So I'm going to recopy this important paragraph into my notebook, but also leaving blanks in it to quiz myself. I kind of did it in easy mode, didn't leave that many blanks, but you can definitely leave more. And now I'm going to quiz myself and see if this is actually effective or not. So I just finished quizzing myself on the paragraph and I kid you not, that was actually super, really surprisingly effective. But what was super impressive is that not only did I memorize the material, but it actually helped me understand it. I guess he was right, I'm definitely going to be using this technique and so should you. Let me know how it works for you and don't forget to follow for more student tips.
people will be handing out notes left and right, but let me show you how you actually should take notes. So there's an art to taking notes. Now I'm going to show you how so you're not just copying the textbook. This is what I did in all my STEM pre-med classes to get an A. I'm going to take you through this process, give you an example, and fill in the rest. Okay, let's do this through an example. So you've listened to the PowerPoint in class, and you know what chapters it covers, so what do you do next? Let's break down the textbook because I know it can be really overwhelming. Wait, I need my beats. If you don't mind how before, you know how important it is to read the textbook. Hopefully you'll fall in love with them one day. First thing you do is you take the PowerPoint and you pull out those key questions. You write it down on a piece of paper. You go to the beginning of the chapter and you write down those key questions as well. Every textbook has this, either at the front page or the end of the chapter. So what do you do next, Jackie? questions now we're on part two see these two things just a pen and a paper that's all you need for step two i swear the worst thing people can do is read the textbook and take extensive notes the first time they read it how can you possibly dive into the information and get a big picture the first time you go through the chapter you're only going to use a pen and paper what are you going to use a pen and paper for jackie three things one write down the words you don't know and look them up two the sections that make your head explode because you're going to keep reading and three points that remind you about another topic or another class like if you're doing biochem, you might write down, oh, IU pack, carbohydrates. Glycolysis, I might want to know the mechanisms from orgo. Okay, now we're on part three. How do you actually take these notes? Okay, this part's exciting. Let me read you at the bottom. So now that you have your question sheet, you're ready to go. Usually the text will break it up by topic, or there'll be like 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. So this is where it gets funky. We're going to break it down like a song. So you got the main part, you got the chorus, you can improvise, and you got the bass. You never think that I'm crazy. So let's walk through this example. you're at 1.1, you're going to sit down and read that again. I'm not looking, you're going to write a one sentence summary. This should be quick now. Line, which is the question. Again, if you're just writing line by line, you're not actually putting it into the big picture. So let's say you're learning about fluid balance, osmotic, and hydrostatic pressure. Find the question from the PowerPoint or the key points from the textbook and write that down. Pick the key picture in the textbook and build around that. So this is an example of a diagram I found in this section. So now you're in the course theme, so what are you actually dealing with? Well, you're looking at veins, capillaries, arteries. Write it down. So now you go in and you fill in a little bit about the arteries and the veins. This is where study sheets become a little bit like a puzzle. For example, if you're looking at this graph with velocity of blood flow and comparing it to arteries and veins, it's important to know, well, what are they composed of in order for you to understand what's driving this mechanism? So we're going to come to the improvise at the end. Okay, now this is my favorite part. But why are you doing this? What's going on? If you're making a study sheet, you better have parts that are different from the textbook. I'm telling you right now. If you're just copying the textbook, then you're not really thinking through it. So now we get to the base, and this is the why. You write down on a piece of paper, physics, chemistry, biochem, orgo. You figure out what parts of those classes integrate in what you're learning. Crazy, Jackie. What do you mean? You're going to do extra work? First of all, this is what puts it all together, and usually teachers mention this in class. Students are like, oh, that's not important. So let me write a bunch of examples so you see how this happens. So for this topic, physics is what comes to mind. Circuits in parallel, series, Bernoulli's law, understanding how this connection of fluid and physiology relates to what you're learning, that's what helps you understand. Let me give you some more examples. As you dive deeper and start to connect other topics, you see how the whole picture comes together. Another quick example is neurons. These are the physics equations you would relate to. In the textbook, they're usually referring to it. You just got to pay attention. My best study tips. Don't study like you'll be tested, study like you'll have to teach someone else. So they actually did a really interesting study on this. So two groups of people were told they were gonna to learn a topic. One group was told they would be tested, the other group was told they would have to teach others. Who do you think learned more? That's right, the group that was told they would teach others. It helped with memory, with knowledge, and they showed better overall understanding of the topic. So study like you'll have to teach someone else. And a really good way of doing this is to actually teach someone else once you're done with a topic. It could be friends, family, siblings, literally anyone who will listen. How to get 90% in every single exam. Flashcards. These got me nines and A stars at GCSE and A level. You test yourself with questions on the front and answers on the back. Scientifically proven study tips. A lot of the time, reading and highlighting in a book is actually not the way to go. Studies have shown that in most cases, it doesn't really help with understanding and it doesn't help you link knowledge and key concepts together. Instead, try this. For every page or even paragraph that you read, write down everything you remember on a piece of paper. This is active recall and it really helps with long-term memorization. Plus, it's a really good indicator for whether or not you're actually paying attention when you're reading. And a little add-on tip, for even better memorization, read through the paragraph or the page one more time and then fill in on the piece of paper what you didn't remember in another color. And as always, happy studying!
Here is helpful things you should do while sitting for a test. The first thing I recommend is chewing a piece of gum and then chew the same flavor while you're taking the test because it'll help you remember what you studied. The next thing I recommend is to write down what you need to work on and then study that because you should focus on what you don't know instead of what you already know. I recommend taking lengthy notes on a Google document and then rewriting them so you can retain more information, but if they're lengthy, do them on a Google Doc. The next thing I also recommend is to go over them on a Quizlet so then you can see what you remember and what you don't remember and then you can just repeat the process and focus on what you need to work on. Three tips that many students swear by. Number one, you're more likely to remember something that you've written in blue ink rather than black ink. Number two, writing down all of your worries before you take an exam helps boost your score. Number three, chewing gum while you're studying a subject and then chewing the same flavored gum while you're taking the test can help you remember the subject and the material that you studied better. I'm curious, do you guys think that these are true? Well anyway, I'm gonna be trying them out and I'm gonna let you guys know the result in part two so make sure you follow to find out.